Hi guys, it's Blackie again. Okay, this is a redo. Uh, well over a year ago, probably two years ago more now, in the Percussion Revolver series, I did a breakdown of my 58 Remington Sheriff's model. And I did it on my workbench because I was tuning the action at that time and deburring it, etc. However, due to the camera I had and the light I had, it came out as this ruby red color. And um, I had been asked by somebody to redo that video on the breakdown of the 58 Remington. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to take you step by step of how I take the gun apart for inspection, cleaning, etc. And hopefully this will give you an idea of how to assemble and disassemble your gun. Okay? So take your time. Go slow. Now, in that video, and I'll put the link to that video at the end of this, I went much more in detail on where to look for burrs, how to deburr, etc. So follow along on that video, but this one will probably be a little more visually. But since this gun has already been tuned, there's no sense in me trying to retune it. Okay? Let me get the camera set, and we'll go. Okay, and you are going to hear some gunfire in the back because I am out at the shooting range today. My day off, and I came out to have some fun. Okay, starting with, this is a Pieta uh, New Model Army, commonly called a 58 Remington Sheriff's Model. It has a shorter barrel than the standard military issue one. Okay, first thing we do is make sure the gun is unloaded. We're going to bring the gun first click, the cylinder free rotates. We're going to drop the loading lever. We we'll draw the pin, slide out the cylinder. We're now going to set the cylinder out of the way. Okay, pushing the pin back, locking it back. It does no purpose past this point. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the grip screw. Depending on how tight your grips are, is whether or not this is a, a, a problem or not. But I like to loosen it up about half and give it a little tap like that, make the far grip kind of pop loose. Now don't go heavy handed on it, just a little tap. But mine fit to the frame so tight that if I don't do that, it's very difficult to get it out of there. All right, there's the grip screw. And now I'm gonna pull the far grip off, reach through the hole, push out the other grip. Like I said, mine's a little tight. I like to fit on them pins nice and tight. Now I'm going to put the two grips together and put that pin back in. Now let's talk about grips for just a second. You notice that mine are walnut and they're finished on both sides or have been finished. Some guns you're going to get, not necessarily by Pieta, will not be finished. When you take the guns apart, you want to finish this. All you've got to do is go to your local craft supply and look in the paint supplies, like for painting on oils on canvas, and they have linseed oil, boiled linseed oil in these small containers. Just dip a fingertip in it and smear it over it. They ain't gotta be heavy. You want it to absorb into the wood, and then after it's done absorbing, let it dry overnight, and then reassemble the gun. That will seal up this wood so moisture doesn't get in here and cause the wood to warp, split, etc. Okay. Okay, right here in front of the grip, there is a screw right there. That puts tension on the main spring. Now we loosen that screw. Don't take it all the way out, you don't have to. It'll just retract up in the frame and it's, it's threaded enough it'll stay there. Leave that loose. Now we go to the trigger guard screw right here in front of the trigger guard. We're going to loosen and take it completely out. Take the trigger guard off. Now what you want to do is set that to the side and I like to put that screw back where it goes. That's kind of a unique screw and I don't want to mess it up by losing it. Okay, screwing it back in just finger snug. Now what you have right here is the main spring, uh, the uh, trigger spring, bolt spring screw right there. Now I, re I see that it's crossways the Opening for the thread is crossways. I've dialed this in so I, when I put it back, I'll take it back to there. It's not fully blood tight down. It adds a certain amount of tension. OK. 
Okay. I take that big screw free. And it can be a little fiddly. There it is. I put that in my container. And then I lift up the trigger spring. Just like that. Now that spring has two legs. The long leg goes to the trigger. The short leg goes to the bolt, or the thing that goes up and locks the cylinder. Now turning the gun onto the side, we have one screw that goes through. A Colt has two. They only have one in the Remington. So I want to unscrew it. Grab a hold of the trigger, put your thumb into the opening, which I mean opening right here where the trigger guard was, and pull straight up on the trigger bolt screw. Then pull the trigger straight out the front, reach in and push down, and the bolt should come out. And all of my stuff's well greased right here. You can see I set this up for storage. There is the Remington bolt. And there is the Remington trigger. Okay. Some ways it's simpler design than Colt. All right, now I need to take pressure off the mainspring for the hammer and take this bolt out easily. An easy way to do that is you want a dowel or something to push in between the mainspring and the body to hold tension on it. Now what we're going to do is this. I'm going to take and loosen the screw that holds the hammer. And then once it's ready, it's loose. I'm going to take the screwdriver and I'll come up here between the frame and the mainspring, just put a little tension like that, and now the screw will come straight out. Now, sliding the tool out. Now you can let the hammer move up, and that takes all the tension off of the mainspring, and now you can just push the mainspring out sideways. A lot of people try to wrestle this and, you know, try to force it in. No, that's what you do. You take it out, and the hammer will ride up. And when it rides up, that gives this room to move out of the way. We'll put that back in a little bit, and I'll show you the trick to that. Now, you take the hammer and push down. And when you do, it's going to come down and expose that little screw right there that holds the hand onto the um, hammer. And that's a teeny tiny little screw, so be careful. There. Now that that screw has been taken out of that hand, now you can push down and the hand comes out the bottom and the trigger comes, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the hand comes out the bottom and the hammer comes out the top. Just like that. Now I need to get a paper towel and clean this up. Be right back. Okay. Now this is just where I have greased it and put the gun up. I haven't shot this gun in several months now, which we're going to be doing a lot more of that here in the near future. I'm just now going to look at it, inspect it, see what's going on, make sure there's no rust in any of these places. Everything looks good. Now, that is the hammer of the 58 Remington. Very similar to the Colt. It uses the same sear notch idea that the Colt does of locking into a deep notch for the half cock and a shallow notch for the full. And it also has that cam lobe right there for holding the hand in place and dropping it. Very similar to the Colt. You can tell each one was kind of reading off of the other one. Alrighty. Now, that's the basic disassembly right there. Now, always inspect your frame. Make sure there ain't no problems or nothing in there. Things that's, you know, 
corrosion that's got in there that you weren't aware of or something. I grease mine down pretty heavily and that's what you're seeing is grease. Alright. Now this being the 58 Remington. In the sheriff's model, the barrel's a little shorter. In a full-size army, it's like this. And the base pin right here can come all the way out on it. But on the sheriff's model, it hits the loading latch right there. And it won't come all the way out. Even if you take the screw out right here that is blocking it on the inside, when you take the screw out and take the uh, rammer off, it still it will hit this. It will not come all the way out. So I just leave mine in place. I don't want to have to take that out and press it back in the uh, end of the loading lever latch. But on the full size, uh, the full size handgun, that the uh, base pin will come completely out. Okay, we're going to start by taking the hammer and coming down from the top and going down so it sticks down below the trigger guard. I am now going to put the hand into the slot, there's a slot on the top right there of the frame that the hand rides in. I'm gonna slide it into there and then I'm gonna line up the big hole in the bottom of the hand with the hole in the hammer, just like that. Now that teensy tiny little bitty bearing screw that anchors everything, I'm going to take it, stick it in the hole, and using screwdriver, I'm going to start it back into position. Be careful with this. Do not cross thread it. It's going to screw down and it's going to go snug. You want it snug and that's it. Don't put, you know, wrath of God to it. And for a point of reference, on the Pieta, the little screwdriver on the Swiss Army knife on the can opener fits it. Okay, so for field cleaning, I can use a Swiss Army knife to take apart my Remington. Now, I take and I pull and wiggle and pull that hammer way up as far as it'll go, like that. Now I'm going to put in my mainspring. I'm going to set it in. I'm going to place it in the base down here, put a little bit of torque onto it, and it'll slide right in, just like that. Now, I'm going to take my finger, hook it, and now I'm going to take something like a spoon handle or something and slide down into here and that's going to push down that mainspring so that I can take my hammer screw and start it down in the hole just like that. I know it's a three hand operation. Actually if I was doing this at home it wouldn't be any problem but I'm trying to do it for camera so you know. Just got to slide it down. There we go. You'll feel it kind of drop into place just like that. Now, just start it with your fingers. Slide the tension off. Go ahead and run down the hammer screw. Snug. Now, gently, gently work and make sure the spring isn't bound up in there. It should work normally where you could pull it back and go forward. Don't snatch it all the way back. You'll go too far. You can snap it. You just want to make sure it's moving. And that one is. Okay. Now I want to take the bolt. And I'm going to turn the gun up. And there's on the... There's a slot looking at it this way on that side. That's where those bolt is going to go up there. The bolt is... The ears, the bolt. I want to put the ears up in that slot. Okay? So they slide straight up in the slot, just like that. And you can look through the hole where the screw goes and see if it's lined up. Now you take the screw and you want to set the trigger on top of the bolt and slide it in and then put in the screw. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Sometimes you gotta wiggle the two of them to get everything to line up properly. There, it did. Sometimes you see I stuck my thumb in there and pushed down on the bolt 
and kind of wiggle the screw up and down and it will go in. Should not ever have to bind, force, or anything. It should just drop in place. Run it down my fingers. Go ahead and take the main hammer screen and screw and tighten it up. I'm tongue tied today, guys. I'm sorry. Snug that up. Now, holding my finger going forward on the trigger. It should lock into half cock, just like that. Holding forward on the trigger, it should lock into full cock, and it did. Okay, so I know that's right. Now, I want to take the spring, the trigger bolt spring, and taking that long leg, there is a little shelf on the trigger itself. Wiggle the trigger, and you will see in front of it a little shelf. That long leg sits onto it, and then you just roll it in. So it's sit, roll in. Okay? Now using my thumb, as you see, to hold it in place, now I take that screw, that short, fat, stubby screw, stick it up in there, and start it in place. A magnetic screwdriver is a big help when doing this. Because it'll hold the screw on the thing. There we go. Now, how tight? Don't run it down blood tight. I want to do it so I can work it and it returns. Now, cock it. Go. Does just fine. Notice I've taken it back where that screw slots straight across. You, there's a certain amount of tension you can put into it. If I went ahead and topped it out and bottomed it out, I'm overworking my spring. It's pulling it down too tight. I want it to be tight enough to do the job, but not so blood tight. The spring can't flex a little. So that's what I do. This will never back off. And I can tighten it up a little, but in doing so, I actually raise up my trigger pressure, how, how much trigger pull it is. Right now, it's about, I don't know, four pounds maybe. Good to go. Okay, now, taking the trigger guard. Taking that little screw out that we sat down earlier into the hole to protect it. Bring the trigger guard over the trigger, come back against the frame. There's a lug right there it fits into the front of the frame. So I want to go over the trigger, go into that lug hole, and then cam it forward, okay? Some of them don't want to go till you wiggle it. It'll want to stand up proud. Wiggle, wiggle, and it should be smooth right here. It should drop fully into the frame, okay? Now I take and put in that screw for my trigger guard. In many ways, the Remington's a little simpler than the Colt. Fewer screws, fewer things to do. But really, it would not be as good in the field for field stripping because the Remington, remember that teeny tiny little screw that does the hand? That would be easily lost and render the gun a single shot. This screw could easily be lost and render it a single shot. Now the screw in front of the trigger guard, uh, the trigger frame that puts tension onto the mainspring. I want to turn that in and just snug it up good, like a half to full turn. What you're doing is that's adjustable for your mainspring. So as your mainspring lost tension over time and got weaker, you could tighten it up and push it out to give more oomph. Just like that. First click, it holds. Full cock, nice good snap, that'll, set, that'll detonate caps, no problem. When I pull it back to half cock, the bolt does go below flush, I'm a cylinder with free turn. Full cock, it pops up, and now it's all in time. Looking into the little window inside, I can see the hand come up, hand go to full extreme, drop, it goes out of the way. So everything is hooked up and functioning. Now I bring it to half cock. Well, excuse me, put on the grips. 
take out the screw. The way I put on my grips is I take the front edge, I put it in, and then there's a pin, locator pin, on the frame and in this hole. I do not want this loose or it'll get wobbly. I want to sit it up there, line it up, mine's a good snug fit, and then taking my thumb, gently squeeze it together. Now that's the one that has the cartouche in it, or the washer. The other one has the big hole where the screw goes through. I'm going to put it in now. And that edge up here on the front is not flat. It's actually cut on a bevel so that it will slide underneath the frame right there and not wobble up and out. So I put it in like that. I line up everything, make sure it's front edge, top edge, and then I back here, about the middle, I put my thumb and I gently squeeze and see how it pops in place. Now that's a good smooth fit the whole way. Make sure everything's in place. Now I put the screw in. Run it up where it's just snug. There, it should not feel loose, it should not feel anything. Once I put it together, give it a little twist, you know, squeeze it, give it a little twist. Check my tension, make sure it wasn't, you know, kind of bound up and then it unbound. It's nice and snug, that's all. Bringing my hammer back to half cock. Drop my loading lever. Now, I'm going to put my cylinder in and I'm going to rotate it in this direction so that the hand locks under. If you try to go backwards, the hand is hitting it, okay? Some people have trouble putting in the cylinder. You put it up there in the window and then you rotate it toward you and it'll just drop in, just like that. Push in the base pin, close it. Make sure she's free flowing. Bring her to full cock. She locks up. Slowly cock it. Locked up. Speed cock it. She locks up. We're 100% back into position. So with the screwdriver and a little bit of patience, you can break down a 58 Remington. On my earlier video, which I'll put the link at the end of this, I did a much more detail where I'm actually doing uh, deburring and etc. And I hope you'll find that one useful as well. People are gonna ask, Blackie, do you like the 58 better than you like the Colt? I'm a tried and true Colt man. Have or Having said that, I always recommend the 58 is the first percussion revolver for somebody because it's so much like our modern revolver with the solid frame and etc. In the field back in the day, which gun would I like better? The Colt is easier to field strip because uh, you can take the cylinder out and all like that crew. But the Colt has, doesn't have the problem that teeny tiny little spring, that teeny tiny little screw that holds the hand on. It's just a peg. Why Remington didn't put a peg, I don't know. There's enough room for one. But by doing so, that's something that gets lost in the field and suddenly you got a single shot. you got to hand rotate everything. So if you're going to be shooting a 58 a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, like for cowboy action stuff, I recommend you go ahead and get an extra set of screws and definitely get one or two extra of that little bitty hand screw because if it gets lost, you're sunk. I hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And as always, thank you very much for supporting my channel. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.